Well, Craig, I'm, I'm really glad you're able to come and spend some time with me today to talk about some things that really matter a lot to both of us. Uh, certainly, the ministry here at TEDS, where you both have studied as a student and you've been on faculty for a number of years, and, and then the impact of TEDS graduates around the world. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about all of that when we're together today. Let's start out, though. Tell me a little bit. How did you end up at TEDS? How, how did you end up here as a student? In fact, if I remember correctly, this your wife, Alice, studied here at the same time, and you guys, you met during that time. But to, uh, unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, well, I uh, did not grow up in a Christian family and became a Christian and during the Jesus movement in mm -hmm. Southern California, grew up in L.A. And... Um, so through campus ministry, didn't really know what we were doing, but uh, my roommate and I started a Bible study, and I was just a math major, and uh, began to sense God's calling uh, in in my life that maybe he wanted me to not just be a math teacher or something, okay. but serve him. And uh, the first church, one of the first churches I had attended was a free church very okay. near to uh, the home where my mother lived. And uh, so there was a free church connection there, and they, of course, recommended Trinity. Mm -hmm. I had also had a minor in philosophy, and at that time, Trinity was well known for its apologetics. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came to choose to come to Trinity. But for a Southern Californian to come to the cold country in Chicago, of course, was <laughs> was a, a real uh, commitment, I guess I'm you could sure, say. I'm sure it would be. And, and yes, I did meet my wife here, who's that's from Ohio. Great. Right. That's wonderful that you, you had that. Now, during that time that you were here in the, as, as, a, as a student uh, doing your master's program, uh, t tell me, just tell me a little bit about how did the time here at Trinity shape you? I mean, when you, know, when you think about your time here as a student, how did God use that to grow you and shape you during that time? Well, um, I was a new Christian. And so uh, just really gaining an appreciation for the Word of God. You yeah. you just, when you've studied Scripture, when you've looked at the original languages, uh, you do read Scripture much differently than I suppose beforehand. But but that wasn't the, all of it. Um, of course, the most impactful thing was meeting my wife here. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, the faculty were, were remarkable. You would have a scholar like Gleason Archer, yeah. a famous Old Testament scholar, and back then we had what was called Day of Witness. Class was canceled and students and faculty would go witnessing. Some would go to the beach, to hospitals, door to door, and you'd get a Gleason Archer or a, a, a Norm Geisler going with students, sharing their faith. Um, many of them were involved in a, in a student project that ultimately planted the church, Village Church of Lincolnshire. Okay. Um, and so we would go Friday nights witnessing in Lincolnshire. David Hasselgrave, a professor of missions, right. he and I led an evangelistic Bible study in Lincolnshire. And eventually uh, at the, the Marriott Resort Hotel had just opened. And that's where that church began its services. But uh, so, <clears throat> of course, those kind of relationships are, are right. very impactful. S fellow students, uh, international students, uh, Edward Muhimi Batka Twako was a protege of Festo Kavendri from okay. Uganda. Right. And uh, he studied here. We lived together in the dorm, uh, really stimulated my vision for missions. He eventually stepped into Kavendri's footsteps, becoming a okay. bishop and, and an evangelist in Africa. Okay. Wow. I mean, it, what I love about what you just shared, though, is this combination of both what you learned and then the investment of faculty and other students in your life, especially with this um, with this sense of faculty engagement and in, in, in planting a local church, doing evangelism. Because part of what I see as I look at, at TEDS today is I love seeing the number of our of our faculty who are involved in their local churches. They have a heart for the church. They love the church. That sense, you know, of how, how we build that bridge between the the, the academy and the local church, which I, it's been encouraging for me to see that. And it sounds like that's been a part of uh, what's been at TEDS from the days you were there. I know I saw it when I was when I was a student here too. Uh, in fact, you mentioned Gleason Archer. Uh, Gleason, uh, Gleason and Sandy's, one of their daughters was in the junior high youth group that I led <laughs> at North Suburban Church. So, you know, it's just that kind of that connection where you see faculty as real people. They're not just in the classroom, but they invest in your life. And I think that's, that's the ongoing from the days you and I were students here and to what we see um, happening, happening here now. Now you left when you when you graduated from here. You spent some time overseas. Tell us a little bit about that and and how 
Ted's prepared you and Alice for, for the work with Reach Global, the Free Church Mission that you did in Germany. Right, so we sense God's calling into missions while we were still students here. Uh, again, interesting stories, but, um, and we had applied with, with the, the Free Church International Mission, as it was okay. called, International Mission Board. Um, but, uh, you know, we were still pretty young. And so they did something very wise. They said, well, before you go to plant churches in Germany, where we were headed, let's see how it goes. Try planting a church in America first. That made total sense to us. Yeah. And so uh, we did for a couple of years. I was a tent maker for the first uh, year or so. I had a secular job. And so in a Chicago suburb, we uh, planted a church. And uh, then in 1981, we did go to Germany and, and began a ministry of church planting there. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, it was, it was not long, a few years after your time in Germany, you came back to Ted's. To, uh, to, to begin your PhD. What led you to come back here to do your PhD work? Well, I wasn't thinking of academics. Uh, I was thinking of a very practical challenge. We were planting a church where virtually everybody in the church were new believers. Okay. Uh, that's the way it worked in Germany. Um, yeah. You didn't have transfer growth. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, we were really challenged by developing leaders. Yeah. And so uh, at that time, T Ted Ward had just come to okay. Trinity and he's he was, a, internationally famous for, uh, as an educator from Michigan mm -hmm. State, he'd come to Trinity and for non-formal adult education. Okay. And so for developing leaders in the context of the local church, I said, I really need to, to know what I'm doing and, and do better. And so that's what prompted me to do doctoral work here at Trinity. Okay. Ted Ward was my mentor, a wonderful mentor, and uh, developed materials that have actually been translated into Germany and German and, and used. Uh, published uh, in, in German, and uh, hopefully God has used that in many ways. So, wow. so that, that time as you were doing your, your doctoral work here, I mean, what you, Ted Ward obviously impacted your life a lot. Other things that helped to shape you as you think about your preparation to go back to Germany, but also eventually to come back here and teach that were a part of that time for you. Right. So one of the things that uh, Ted really worked on was developing a sense of community. Okay. And um, that was very enriching. It was a very collaborative community, learning community. And uh, that has carried on to today. So even when I later came to teach here, uh, particularly in the doctoral program, but, but also in other contexts, uh, there's a very strong sense of community where we're here to help each other. We're, we're not competing with each other. Who's yep. the best or the smartest? But how can we help each other uh, reach our maximum potential? And that, and and uh, not just academically, but praying for one another, being a, a spiritual family, and especially for many of our international students, uh, we're kind of their first go-to family here. And so that that was very important during my doctoral studies, and that carries through today very strongly here. You know, I think I appreciate so much of what you're what you're sharing, though, Craig, because I think it's easy for folks to look at a seminary, to look at higher Christian education, especially on the master's and doctoral level, that it this is just a heady thing. This is just about only high ideas and, and academic things, when in reality, it's that combination of taking what we're learning and applying it into the lives of people. And that's what you shared. I mean, it's this is how do we do that and to see that continue right on to today, which is which is encouraging. So from the mission field, you do your doctoral work, and then you come back to TEDS to, uh, to join the faculty. How did you make that transition? And what has that been like as you've been coming, as you've come back here and now for, for several years have been on faculty? Right, so we had involved, been involved in planting several churches uh, in Germany. And I began to transition already there into teaching, training other church planners, okay. training missionaries. Yeah. So we had been doing that for a few years. We were coaching other REACH Global uh, church planners throughout right. Central Eastern Europe when the Iron Curtain had come down. We were consulting with churches in the East. Mm -hmm. It was a very exciting and uh, challenging time. Yes. Um, we came to a point where we sensed for family reasons we probably needed to return to the U.S. And God's timing was good. Right at that time, the director of Reach Global Mission, uh, Ben Sawatsky, said, we want to create a position at Trinity that integrates field work with the academic work. And we want to create this a chair of mission, which would devote 75% of that person to teaching at TEDS and 25% of that person to actually continuing to train and develop workers internationally. And that was like the perfect fit 
for me, uh, I'm not the strictly ivory tower type. And so yeah. this combination of being able to travel and, and yeah. coach and teach internationally right. with teaching in a classroom with some of the best students in the world, how could you resist? And so yeah. that was uh, God's call. It wasn't a difficult decision uh, to cool. come and be a part of TED's. And just to, to explain that and that position had carried on until recently, uh, was a wonderful way to integrate. Yeah. This is what we're about. Yeah. And this is why that position was created. Uh, so that what we're teaching in the classroom is up to date. It reflects what's actually happening in real ministry, in our case, in, in cross-cultural right. ministry. And at the same time, we're taking the research we're doing, what we're learning here, and we're bringing that to help those people who are on those front lines make sure that they're up to date and, and doing best practices and so on. So it was a wonderful, still is, I'm still uh, doing a similar sort of position with that and uh, I'm not tired yet, so. <laughs> well, and I can tell. In, fa in fact, uh, that's really, uh, I think where your path and my path originally crossed was during that Reach Global time because I, I was leading the Africa division for Reach Global and you were doing training, you were doing training around the world, but some of that training in Africa, and I know you worked with some of the key national leaders that I was working with and developing church planning training material and traveling the continent and investing your life. And it was, uh, that to me was such, such an exciting example of the, the kind of, uh, of integrated connection between TEDS and the ministry of the local church, uh, here certainly here in the United States, but overseas. Just think about the way that there really is that mutual investment, mutual heart, and uh, yeah, I, I, people ask me sometimes about you and I say, Craig and I have been all over the world in different places <laughs> in training things. But, but to, for me to watch you, how excited you are when you're in those settings, to be able to be with key leaders and to be able to see how God is invested in, in their lives and for you to be able to train them. Now, now let, me, let me flip that maybe uh, the other side of it because your time here certainly has given you, as you said, the information to be able to take and do training around the world. How did your, inv how did your involvement out there impact your teaching here? Well, I, I learn a tremendous amount uh, from those leaders and, and, and not just leaders, but grassroots people. I, I love it. We, we would do grassroots church planner training in Nepal or India or Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, these, these are frontline folks that, that have the battle scars, so to speak. And to learn from them, their spirituality, what right. best practices, what they're doing, and how God's using them in ways I would have never thought of. Right. And Again, that kind of learning uh, comes back into the classroom, right? And it's those are going to be the stories I tell. There's going to be the sidebars and the books that I write, and um, uh, that's that integration that we really want to see. Again, sometimes people get this idea: well, Ted's is that sort of intellectual place. Well, in a way, yes, but but intellectual in the best way of <laughs> learning and yeah. bringing that learning together yeah. and and enriching one another in a mutual learning. Uh, and, and that's what's so wonderful with so many international students yeah. here too, by the way, uh, they just bring such a richness into our, our discussions and uh, expanding our vision and so on. Well, I think that, that's the thing that I see being back on campus again, of the, the international students that are here, the richness that they bring to our discussions and the interactions in classrooms. And I mean, I just see them on campus, whether it's having lunch with them over in the dining hall or whether it's being with them on campus or chapel and you see that the, 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 the wonderful richness of the breadth of the body of Christ around the world is here. And then to be able to take, for you, to take what you learned as you were training, to bring it back, to apply it here. And, and this very synergistic uh, model of, of learning there, learning here, and being able to see it go uh, both directions, which to me is a win all the way around. And it's a win not only for those who are going into cross-cultural ministry per se. This is a win for pastors who are going to stay yes. in America or yeah. Canada or wherever they're from, yeah. because as we know, America is becoming more and more diverse. And if the church in America is not adapting to these changes, demographic and so on, yeah. ethnic changes in America, we're going to be missing out. And so for students to come to Trinity 
and learn side by side with people from all over the world. This is a great preparation, even if you're going back to a little suburban white church uh, that may not stay that way. <laughs> well, and that's really true. Now, I, I found, uh, you know, even uh, it was some of what I learned when I was a student here. And yet I go back to my time pastoring a church in San Jose, California, and we began a partnership with Reach Global in East Africa among an unreached people group. And it was interesting, every time a team from our church would go to East Africa, or I would go to do training in Africa and come back, the people in the church would say, Kevin, you're different. There, there's something, you've learned something, you've engaged uh, with people there, you're back, there's something that you're bringing that we benefit from. And that that's a, I think works here in, on campus and it's a blessing uh, to the church here in the United States and to the church in the world. And I, I appreciate you being that bridge in many ways, Craig, between that. It's been fun for me to watch you do that. And, and I'm not the only one. Uh, most of our faculty, they may not have a whole 25% of right. their job description right, right. doing this kind of thing. But as you said, Sundays they are out in churches. They're, yep. they're preaching. They're involved in their own home churches. They're being invited to other churches yep. and conferences. They're staying in touch. Many of them are also teaching internationally during the summer. Well, that's very true. In fact, as I was talking with a few of our faculty this past summer, they were telling me the different places around the world where they're teaching. And, you know, pro probably the one that, that I hear the most stories from is our dean, David Powell. Uh, Dr. Powell is out teaching a variety of different places uh, in doing that. It's very, to me, that is the, that, it's a great picture of what TEDS really is and uh, to, to the learning and the investment. Now, you've had an opportunity for, uh, for years to be investing in the lives of students. And we just returned a week or two ago from the Lausanne Four Congress on World Evangelization, an incredible event, 5,200 people from, I think it was 220 nations of the world that were there for most of a week to be able to worship together, learn together, interact together. It was, a, it was an amazing time. But as a part of that time, we had a couple of, uh, of TED's alumni gatherings, one with our, our alumni in the Seoul area in South Korea, and then and then a second with our alumni that were a part of the Luzon Congress. Um, and, and as I think about that, I think I was thinking about the incredible impact that TED's graduates have had and are having around the world. And, and then I, I, for, for me, it was fun to watch you interact with them, Greg, because obviously <laughs> you love them and they love you. I mean, as, as I watch that, just to see the conversations and, 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 and the, the reconnection with some that you hadn't seen for a while. Tell me a little bit, as, as you look at our alumni that are serving around the world, what, what impact have you seen that TEDS has had through them on their work in various places around the world? Yeah, I, I like to look at it at at least two different levels. It's easy to focus on those high visibility leaders yeah. and a lot of high visibility yeah, leaders. Really we saw Lausanne. I yeah. mean, if we look at Lausanne, Michael O, the executive director of the Lausanne movement, uh, Pastor Jae Hoon Lee of Onori Church, one of the largest churches in Korea, the, the host church, so to right. speak, uh, uh, of, of uh, the Lausanne Congress. Uh, those are some of those high visibility right. people. One of uh, my former doctoral students who just uh, within uh, a few weeks of the Lausanne event was appointed as uh, the president of Tokyo Christian University. So these are some of those high visibility people right. that are really the big multipliers. Right. But I don't want to forget those folks that uh, have the low profile, yeah. that they're, they're pastoring ordinary churches and uh, doing good work, yeah. making disciples. I think of some of our people who are in foreign mission work in hard places yes. uh, that we don't even name the countries because right. they're very sensitive and potentially dangerous. Uh, sometimes they don't see a lot of fruit, but very faithful. Yeah. And they're taking what they got here at TED's and they're being faithful stewards of that education. And just seeing that, whether it's high visibility or low visibility, it's a, just a joy to see that. And even though, you know, my part and whatever they're doing is just one little, little nudge in one direction <laughs> right. compared to all the other influences, it's still a great sense of reward to be a part of that, to be a, yep. a part of the bigger thing that God is doing. 
uh, that that's a great joy. That was one of the, the real highlights of that Lausanne Congress. Well, and I could see just watching you interact with our alumni. In fact, as I you, you mentioned, some that are working in hard places, even at, at the alumni event that we had with the alumni that were at the Lausanne Congress. I mean, we in the course of about an hour and a half, uh, two two hours of interactive time, people coming and going. We had close to a hundred people that that were TED's alumni that came in and interacted with us. But I remember as we we were taking a large panoramic a photograph, there were a few that had specific lanyards on that were from places in the world that uh, we couldn't share their photos. And that, that's the kind of folks that, that aren't the big high profile flashy names that, that we might recognize, but are doing amazing work in different places around the world. And I, I found as I was at Luzon, it was just interesting, I'd introduce myself and people would say, so what's your name? Where are you from and what do you do? <laughs> and, and when I say I'm the president at Trinity, their eyes would light up and it was like, oh, Ted's, we know Ted's. I know somebody who studied there or I, I'd love to study there. Or, and, and so I th this sense, I think, around the world of what we hold dear, which is the, the authority and the inerrancy of the word of God and God's mission that we are entrusted with the gospel. And because we live out the mission of God and we want to do it in a way that you've talked about that, that includes the best thinking that we can do as well as practical application of it, it makes a difference in people's lives. Yeah. Our international reputation is really astonishing. When you think of a little yeah. Swedish, Norwegian, Danish movement from years ago, yeah. uh, and still in the grand scheme of things, the free church is a mid-sized yeah. movement to be able to have called into existence a school like Trinity that has such an international yeah. reputation and footprint is really astonishing. And uh, I only wish that some of our folks in, in the States here uh, could appreciate the way some of our international partners do because they really love Trinity. And, yeah. and as you say, Trinity stands for the authority of the Word of God. That's really the center point. Yeah. And, and yet a big enough tent so that people from different uh, confessional orientations can also feel at home here and learn from one another uh, with the authority of Scripture right in the center. Yep. Well, and in the midst of that, as we as we see our, our student body here and our faculty here at TEDS, to me, to watch them worship in chapel, to be at prayer gatherings, you see the heart of the people of God. And it is really reflection of the heart of Christ for his church and uh, the mission that God's called us to be a part of. Uh, Craig, it's been, it's been wonderful to chat with you. It's, it's been great over the years to serve with you with Reach Global and to see what God's done in different parts of the world through your influence and Trinity's influence. And now to be able to serve with you here at TED's is, is a great joy for me. So thanks for what you do. And thanks for sharing a bit of your heart of what matters to us about what God's doing in and through the work of TED's, the free church, and the church around the world. Well, it's been a privilege and we appreciate your leadership so much.